Hey, this is Patrick Murphy Racy, uh, heading for my first bowl game of the bowl season. Uh, Middle Tennessee State's going to play Arkansas State in football tonight. And uh, I'm going down to Montgomery, Alabama to cover the game. And my guest lens uh, for tonight is the Sigma 500mm f4 uh, sport lens. And of course I use that with the Sigma MC11 adapter which allows me to have full control of autofocus and XIF data with uh, the A9. I also have with me the 1.4 Telextender, um, so this would be a good time to uh, go to a kind of a relatively dark uh, game under lights and see how the lens performs with autofocus because sometimes if it's not like a bright sunny day they fall down but also it'll be a great time to be able to shoot uh, at a poorly lit stadium with the 504 at 5.6 at 700 millimeter. So we're going to have some fun tonight. Um, I uh, am looking forward to trying this new lens out. I love the 504 focal length. So, whoa, and the camera's not mounted. So sorry about that. It's a little bumpy here in Alabama um, in more ways than one lately. But anyway, uh, so uh, we'll just kind of got a few more miles to go and then we'll uh, pull into Montgomery. Thanks for watching. I'm Patrick Murphy Racy, a Sony artisan, and uh, looking forward to shooting football tonight with you. Thanks. Okay, so it's going really well. Um, I can say for sure, just with shooting half a game so far, that the 504 Sigma Sport Lens is the very best non-Sony manufactured lens to shoot sports with, period. Uh, I also own the 135-18 Art Lens, and it's killer for basketball. It's really, really great. This one is even a little bit better than that one, um, so I'm really impressed. Now, it's all because of this little MC11 adapter thing. So the, the MC11 adapter makes this Canon mount Sigma Lens work killer on the A9, and it'll work great on the A7R3, which is really good news because that's a 10 frame per second camera with just, like right now these are 150 bucks. This is only $6,000 as compared to like $8,000 and $9,000 for the Canon and Nikon version of the same thing. And this is nano-coated glass, so you get the very latest coatings. I'm really, really impressed. The autofocus acquisition is ice cold and the, um, the autofocus speed is excellent. Um, it never has one time in a whole half of shooting football, um, like sometimes they wig out, like with the Metabones, it'll just stop working you have to shut the camera off and turn it back on i've not had to reset one time so far tonight which is killer the only the only bad news is that one thing i was really really hoping for is that there the sigma 1.4 converter would work really well with this and while it does attach um the it automatically goes into afs mode now i'm gonna have to do some research because it's possible that there is a firmware update for this teleconverter that I have not done yet. I don't know. So this might work great, but for tonight, um, this will only do AFS. So you can't do continuous autofocus, which is a bummer. Um, but otherwise, as a 504 Prime, this is the way to go right now uh, until you know they drop their 4028 in September of 18. This right now is the, if you have to shoot sports, if you're shooting golf or, or um, track and field or auto racing or football or any field sport like soccer, um, this is just an absolute killer way to go and it's not very expensive as compared to the Canon Nikon counterparts. So I'm really impressed uh, and then the next thing we'll do is I'll kind of show you some pictures when I'm back home and, and let you see some of the images that I got tonight. But I'm very impressed. Thank you, Sigma. Thank you for like giving us this little guy that gets us so many, so much more glass than was possible before. So I'm really pumped. This is Pat Murphy Racy at the Camellia Bowl. Catch you later. My game take. So, one of the things I people ask. One of the things people ask me a lot is what focus mode do you use on the A9? Uh, and for football with non-Sony lenses, I find the best results with uh, expand flexible spot. Um, and I can reach in to find the quarterback here in between all this periphery, this guy and this guy and the ref and this guy way back in the back here. And I can hit exactly where I want to go. Um, then, you know, 
it, it's really good. And even if I'm off a little bit, it'll grow to the, to the uh, autofocus sensors around where I hit. So if I hit on the 15 by accident, of course, it's going to be sharp. But if I hit back here, um, it's going to find him. It's going to find his shoulder here. And since this, this is all closer to the camera than this, it's going to work great. And the 504 worked great here. Um, so just a little, little bit of a thing there. Um, so basically, um, here's a, a, a nice, I always have a camera on my neck, uh, no matter what, no matter what the game is. And this is a 5518 Zeiss on, an a, on another A9. And it's just an awesome way to shoot because this is the only camera that I use where I actually activate autofocus with the shutter release button. Uh, just the around the neck camera, I always take the grip off to make it as light as possible. I also make the, the strap as short as possible so I don't have to reach very far to find that camera. I often don't even look through the viewfinder when I shoot, which is pretty crazy, but it, it does work really well that way. Um, and so here's a series of a bunch of images, uh, and, it, and they're all sharp. It just takes the computer a minute to like get the, there you go, the final resolution. But you can see kind of what's happening. This is the almost catch, and then it's bobbled, and it's bobbled, and it's bobbled, and it's bobbled. But this is true 20 frames per second, and it's amazing to be able to work this fast. And I'll, I'll run this for you, so look at how far the ball is when I'm acquiring. So the ball is there, the ball is there, the ball is there, the ball is there, the ball is still not in his hands. And anytime we want, we can just zoom in and see how sharp it is. And it's very, very sharp. In fact, if you notice, his helmet here is tack sharp. This is all sharp. The towel sharp, the shoe. The ball is not in his hands yet, and it's, so it's spiraling. And that's why the ball is a little bit uh, blurred. Uh, and then his hands are sharp. His hand here is, is moving so fast. But anyway, it's cool. You can just see this, and you can just kind of go. In. And then, you know, where's the picture? Um... Maybe this one, because you can see both faces, and then they're all tangled up. Maybe this one, because his eyes are really popping, and he's the defender. Um, not that one, because you have no eyes. Um, this one's kind of funny, because like they're reaching in, and this guy's got his hand in the ball in this one. So you have to kind of just figure out, you know, what's the best, what's the best frame. But for me, I'd probably be, I'd probably go with this one, I would think. And, uh, you know, I'd be cropping here and here. I like the ref watching the play. That's pretty cool. So anyway, uh, we'll, we'll keep going. But the 55 around the neck is just an amazing, amazing way to work. It's great. Um, whenever you're shooting a kick uh, on goal, you know, you want to be focused on the defenders. You want to be focused on these guys because if they block the ball, if one of these guys gets their hand on it, you have a good shot of getting it, and it, it, that works great. Um, just be looking for defense. A lot of people just only shoot offense in football, and it's like an incredible game. And you know, I always say there's four games. There's like there's really four teams playing four teams. There's offense, defense, special teams, and coaching. And usually, one of those teams wins the game or loses the game. And, and so you got to be thinking about the eight different groups of people that are playing each other just like the nice and tight okay here's another pass play um, it is sharp it just takes a little minute for it to catch up just so you can see that I'm telling the truth there you go and realize that you know we're at 4,000 ISO here at 700 millimeter so we've got the 1.4 extender on here uh, on the A9 um, so here's the series he's got his hand on it he kind of doesn't it's almost like he caught it with the back of his hand, which doesn't work real well, obviously. Um, so, But a nice little play where I've got the ball before it hits his hands. Now he's making contact, but his hands are out of sorts. And then, boom, you know. Uh, so this is kind of a bummer. Now, again, we're at 700 millimeter here. We've got uh, 700 millimeter F4. It says F4, but it's really 5.6. Um, because we've got the 1.4 extender connected. We're at 12.50 of a second at 5.6 at 4,000 ISO uh, on the A9. And this is quite good. I mean, this kind of like noise level and stuff like that, that's pretty dang good for being a loose picture. 
But here's the problem. Uh, the one four converter from Sigma has not yet been optimized for AFC, that is to say autofocus continuous. So as you watch these series of, of plays here, the court, this guy, the running back, is going to get more and more and more out of focus each frame. Because what it's going to do is as soon as you hit the button and you make your first frame, that frame will be sharp. That's this one. After that, he's going to be running out of that focus plane. Um, and you'll see it'll get progressively worse and worse and worse. Um, and he'll just become a fuzzball. So this, I think, is a short-term problem. I don't think that this is going to be an issue going down the road. Once, once Sigma figures out, you know, we need to... I'm not sure if, if the... Um, if the dock can can change the firmware in a converter yet, uh, but I would say that's kind of what needs to happen here. So this is not distressing to me. I just want it to work before next football season. <laughs> and then of course here I have uh, reacquired, like I I let off the back button focus, and then here I've reacquired, and he's plenty sharp again. And then he will continue to be sharp a little bit, and then he's going to run again through that plane of focus. To where he's going to be more and more out of focus and this is this is a bummer but it's not the end of the world and again i've reacquired uh and then he's a fuzzball he's a fuzzball he's a fuzzball so basically for nature photography for a lot of bird work birds and nests and things like that um the one four converter is going to be fine because they're not going to move around um but if you're doing you know if you're doing sports that are continuously moving the one four converters, we, we're just waiting for a fix on that, I think. I hope. So here's again, uh, we're still down here at uh, 500 millimeters, so we've lost the, uh, the one four. We're at a thousand of a second F4 at, at just 2,000 ISO. Um, I usually like my shutter speed a little bit higher than that. 2,000 is kind of minimum, but I was trying to just see the quality. I love this guy. He must have lost a bet or something, this dude with the, with the nasty Christmas sweater on. So I'd love to know the backstory of that. But anyway. Uh, so here we go with a, a pass play. I'm a little bit late on this one. I'd like to be earlier than this, but hey, I'm still there. Um, so obviously that didn't work out. And the defender uh, was did a good job of, of uh, causing that interference. Is it sharp? Yep, it's sharp. No problem. So we're going to keep going. Um, this is kind of a cool frame. This one, this guy is tack sharp. Now again, I'm using, um, I'm using that... Uh, Expand flexible spot, so it's going to be kind of in the middle here. So it, the camera is autofocusing with the lens very well. Check out his arm. It's kind of crazy. That's just wild what the muscles do in, in, in duress in traffic. But anyway, so it's very sharp on this guy. But the next frame I'm kind of panning over because I'm trying to figure out what's going to happen next. And, of course, instantly, this, these are two frames uh, at 15 frames per second. And the first frame is here. The second frame is tack sharp on him. So the A9 with the, um, the sport version 500 F4 Sigma lens is working great. It's really working well and very impressed. Again, I'm reaching way in. I'm looking for focus there. No problem. I've got it. Um, you know, I've got three different frames. Probably the best frame is maybe that. I like the stance better than this. And uh, wait for it to catch up. And uh, that's actually a little out of focus. This guy's not, this guy's sharp. So, uh, my bad. Um, okay, another long pass play. I found an elevated position uh, behind the, uh, the other end zone. And, of course, the ball is right there. I'm, I'm early on it, which is nice. I got all the time in the world. This is just 504 prime, so there's not going to be any issue with, uh, with autofocus even though they're moving. So here we've got, let's just go ahead in here and take a look and see what we got. Um, this looks quite good. Yeah, look at those eyes. We got, we got three sets of eyes here, which is really unusual. And it's very nice to get the defender and the, the offensive receiver. So that's, that's really good. Um, which frame is better? <laughs> this is because he's getting hit from behind this guy. This guy's already reaching in, trying to bobble the pass. Let's see if he's able to be successful. Um, no. Now we've got great react here. This guy's lost. Um, I'm going to pull back out so you can see where I'm at. Um, and so then there's this 
Yeah, so kind of a cool play, but just love all the time I get and how many frames per second I get with the A9 in the, in the Sigma Glass. 15 frames a second with full autofocus. It's just, it's just an awesome way to work. Um, so anyway, here's a nice play that really shows that, that continuous autofocus at work. I don't even know how many frames we're going to look at here, but here's a guy. He's just caught this big, long kick return, and he's way back in his own end zone or near it. And here he goes. And I'm going to let this be out of focus. Every, every one of these frames is sharp, um, but I'm just going to let it go. Um, and, of course, you like the... Um, let's see, he almost got him there. He's checking up, up, up field. Okay, this is a nice frame. Let's just check focus real quick. We'll go in here and see if he's sharp, and he definitely is sharp. You can even read Chameleon Bowl, Raycom, Chameleon Bowl. Um, very nice. So uh, all these frames are really tack. Uh, I've got good confidence about that, which is really nice. And he's going to just keep on booking until he runs out of the sideline, and then he just ran off to the side after that one. But easy for the camera to do this. I love this defense. I love shooting defense. It's awesome. And so few people do. They're just taking this dude down. And then after he's down, they all have the attitude. And it's just great. This is a great defensive picture. I'd love to get this to the, the defensive line coach because this is, this is what it's about in football. Um, again, working in traffic, I'm, I'm able to easily get what I want in focus, which is the quarterback here, um, and then not anything else. Here's a long distance pass play. This is all the way across the field. I'm probably looking at 80, 90 yards away from where I'm at. He's very sharp, all is well. Um, and then just a couple of different frames of the ball falling away, both up in the air. Uh, it's really easy to do this with the A9. Um, the A9 with FE glass is, is absolutely the best possibly you could get with lag time on the shutter. It's amazing, but even with um, the Sigma Canon mount lens with it with the MC11, I have no problem getting this. This is a tough shot shooting tight to get this consistently every time the kicker hits the ball with his foot, and you can easily get the ball off the foot, no problem. I was a little late on this. This guy leapt all the way over, and he did like a hurdle thing, and he's way up in the air, and I'm late on it, and I'm bummed about it still. Uh, it's not even been a month. I'm still bummed about this, but uh, it was kind of cool how it, how it uh, I got part of it anyway. Um, this is a, a good example of the autofocus working with the expand flexible spot. So I'm, I'm wanting this guy, I've hit him, usually the autofocus will get fooled and the autofocus is not fooled. Um, and there's this dude, man, I just, I got to hear the backstory on this. Somebody's got to message me or something and tell me what bet he lost that he had to wear this like Barney Christmas sweater. I just, I love that, man. You got to love it. So, um... This is a different guy running, but again, right through traffic. Like, here's the ref. Here's a, another offensive player, and I can see right through in there. It's nice and sharp, no problem. This is a night game. We're at 2,000 ISO here, 1,600 of a second at F4. Um, very nice, you know, easy. It's a very easy lens to make work well. I love the little guys. I always shoot the little guys in basketball and football. It's just fun to see these guys are so quick and fast and that they still have a role in the field, even though they're not huge, massive behemoth you know, guys. It's cool. Oh, let's check and see if that's sharp. And, oh, yeah, looking good. Very nice. Love it. Okay, just a kick return. Um, just nice little, you know, detail. The uh, detail in his hands, in the glove, all the spider web. You can see the tape so perfectly. The hair on his forearm. Um, there's just detail to burn here. Um, and again, we're at uh, we're at 2,000 ISO, and things are looking good. It's pretty nice. Nice series here, um, where you know the Sony A9 with the 504 Sports doing a great job. So this is a sack that sort of develops. And lucky for me, the quarterback turns right to me and I get his face and I get his reaction as he's coming down and he's going down, he's going down. He's looking for the ground now. He's completely off the ground except for one foot. Now he actually hits. Great face in there. <laughs> 
hate to, uh, you know, we got the, we got his face too, which is nice. Um, and uh, now he's finally down. It's very important not to pull out the viewfinder after a play like that because now sometimes the play itself, like I probably would go with, um, I think probably, you know, this picture is really good. The, the reaction is excellent. This looks good too. But the reaction to the play is often more important than the play itself. Here's this guy saying thanks to God, which I appreciate. And then his teammate comes up behind him. And we're getting some big Jew. we got teeth. He's smiling big now. Um, you can see that right in the helmet. There we go. Look how sharp that is. Um, and, but I think the best frame is probably this one. I just love this. Because now we have both players... They're both reacting, and look at how sharp that is. And these are, you know, African Americans in a night game under a poorly light, lit stadium. It's great. This is this is what it's about, man. I love it. Okay, another pass play from across the field, um, and bobbling the ball, but he's got hold of it now. We are emerging from an era where off-brand lenses were not the same build quality and they certainly weren't as sharp as what was offered by the major camera manufacturers but i gotta tell you that era is over um, in many respects what sigma is doing right now is often better than uh, the dslr lens manufacturers it's really amazing uh, their art series is like really really good stuff um, the 504 uh, sport lens is no exception um, I find, uh, and this is after a lifetime of shooting long glass, I've been shooting long lenses since about 1984. Um, I've been doing this a very long time uh, and have shot virtually all the Nikon and Canon uh, long glass that's, that's available. Even the 1200 5.6, I got to shoot that once that Canon made. Um, and the 300 F2 Nikkor, I've shot those for both for Sports Illustrated. Um, the 504 Sigma lens holds up just fine to what Canon and Nikon are making at the current rates. Especially when you consider the price uh, difference and how inexpensive um, the Sigma lens is as compared to the Canon lens. And the Nikon offering, the most recent Nikon glass, is very expensive. It's over $10,000. Um, and Sigma's right there at, at uh, 6000 brand new. Plus, you're not going to get the typical one-year parts and labor warranty that you're going to get from Canon and Nikon. You're going to get four years of parts and labor warranty from Sigma. Um, all in all, I just found that uh, shooting the game, uh, it never fell down. It didn't ever like lag behind. It was very fast, autofocus. The Acquire... Um, was violent, just like I'm used to with uh, Canon and Nikon glass. And all in all, I, there really isn't a whole lot of difference between um, how the Sigma acts. And remember, this is an, an adapted Sigma lens. So the 504 that I was testing is a Canon mount lens with the MC11 adapter attached. It's going to probably work slightly better on a Canon body without that adapter in between. So uh, I think that the 504 Sigma holds up just fine to the competition. It's less expensive, has a better warranty, and all in all, uh, I'm going to be getting one. Uh, when I shoot football in 2018, it's going to be with the Sigma 504 and probably the, the new Sony 4028 whenever it comes out. Um, there's one caveat, though, uh, and there's one area that Sigma really needs to address and that is they make a fantastic 1.4 converter which is optically matched for this lens as well as the 120 300 to 28 uh, sport lens but when you are using the combination of a sony body the mc11 and the 1.4 converter with the 500 millimeter lens you lose autofocus continuous altogether so if um if the action is very close to you, um, the second frame, third frame are going to be fuzzballs. And by the time you get to 10, 15 frames, it's going to be completely unrecognizable. You won't, probably won't be able to read the number. So this is a problem. And Sigma needs to address this. Um, and one way to do that would be to allow 
uh, either the adapter or the lens or the converter to be firmware upgradable, um, something is wrong in that mix because when you use a Canon lens with a 1.4 converter made by Canon and the MC11 on a Sony body, it works great. And you can do continuous autofocus and it gives you a nice series of frames. It's all good. So for right now, you'd have to use um, that combination in order to achieve a 1.4 converter. So for birders, uh, for birds on the nest or something like that, the 1.4 converter works great right now with the, with the uh, Sigma 504 Sport. Uh, I recommend it. Um, but if you're shooting action that's moving towards you or away from you, auto racing, baseball, football, virtually all field sports, it's going to be tough uh, to really make it work unless you reacquire each frame, which is a real drag. That's my only issue with, um, I have no issue with the lens. The Sigma 504 Sport is awesome. It's ready for, like, for you to use right away, either to rent or buy. I would recommend it strongly. But the 1.4 is almost there. We're just sort of so close. Uh, we just need that. We need something updated with either the lens, the converter. Something's got to change where that autofocus will be continuous with the 1.4 attached to the 500 f4. Uh, the one thing I don't know is if it, if the um, the combination of MC11 and 504 will autofocus with a Canon 1.4 converter. And if somebody out there can try that, even at a camera store, I would love to know if that works. Um, if you have that information, I would really love to have it. Please put it in the comments below. Okay, so you can see from the photographs that I was able to make at my first time using this lens, it's awesome. I mean, there is nothing wrong with this lens. It is ready to go right now. Uh, I think it's the best value on the planet. Uh, I now own the uh, 135 1.8 art lens. And that lens for um, basketball is just making tremendous pictures for me. Uh, it's super fast and low light. It just, it's way sharp. It's just a wonderful lens to work with. Uh, the 504 is the same. Um, I would say that those two lenses of all that I've tried are the closest to a Sony FE mount lens, a, a true uh, E mount lens that I've ever experienced. And I have every confidence that once Sigma starts dropping their FE lenses uh, in that actual mount, that things will even improve more. So I, I'm very excited about what 2018 will bring. I can't wait to see what Sigma's got up their sleeve. Hopefully they'll do more than just make the lenses they already make in E-mount. Hopefully they'll make some new lenses uh, as well. Um, and uh, that 3028 needs a refresh, bad. So I would love to see Sigma have a, a 3028 or even a 4028 uh, in the next couple of years. Hey, I know this video is kind of long, so thanks for hanging in there with me. Um, I'm very excited about the new Sigma, Sigma 504 sport lens. Um, can't wait to buy one. Uh, I feel confident that they're going to figure out the 1.4 and the 2X and make sure that those autofocus and continuous uh, high with high motor drive settings. Um, one last thing, if you have sort of enjoyed this video and you're interested in buying um, uh, the Sigma 504, uh, I no longer do affiliate links. Um, and I feel strongly that it's important for all of us, wherever we are, to, to support our local photo specialty dealers. So I would ask you to go to alphauniverse.com and then backslash uh, dealer locator and find your local uh, place that sells Sony. It's very important for us to keep um, what camera stores we have to have left alive. We've lost so many uh, over the past 10 years, and it's really sad. So support the people that can answer your questions. Support the people that can really give you good support um, after the purchase, and, and the people that will help you make good decisions about whatever you should buy next uh, to increase your sort of portfolio of lenses or cameras or whatever. So um, support your dealer network. Thanks very much. I'm Patrick Murphy-Racy, Sony Artisan.